All right, welcome guys to Credit Repair Cloud Training. I'm your host, Credit Coach Nicole Scott, and we're gonna be covering the ins and outs of using Credit Repair Cloud software to help you repair credit. You can use this for yourself. You can use this to start a credit repair business. You can use this to start a credit repair side hustle. Whatever your goal is, Credit Repair Cloud is a great software and automation tool that you can use to speed up the process of how long it's going to actually take you to sit there and process a file if you did not have software. It literally keeps everything in one place. So the first thing that we're going to do and we're going to be going through this, so make sure that you have some time put away, you are in a relatively, you know, quiet location where you can pay attention, listen and watch because we are going to be showing you exactly how to use the software. These are very important steps because as soon as you get the software, this is how you want to go ahead and get everything set up. So we're going to be covering everything from how to put a client in to you know, some of the back end settings, how to put your dispute letters in your letter library and be able to put everything together. So this is gonna be broken up into different sections because typically, you know, we can't sit for more than 15, 20 minutes at a time. So I'm gonna try to break these into sections for you guys. So that way it's easier for you guys to, you know, sit down, process the information. If you need to rewatch some of the video, rewatch it. And then once you are comfortable, move on to the next video. Okay. So let's go ahead and get started. The first step is obviously we want to go to this little login area where we can log into our credit repair cloud account. Um, it'll take you to this where we can just put in our user info and we're gonna log in. You can log in from a phone, cell phone, tablet, laptop, desktop, pretty much any type of device, you're gonna be able to log in and you know see what's going on if you need to make some changes, updates. That's why I like this software so much because no matter where you're at, whether you're at home, whether you're at the kids' baseball game or you know, school, whatever, you can log in right from your mobile phone and make changes. And, you know, everything can be pretty much done online. So let's go ahead and get started. When you log in, All right, so here is the welcome screen. This is uh, the home screen that you're gonna actually see when you first log in to Credit Repair Cloud. And this is pretty much gonna take you, you know, to a number of different locations. This is kind of like a landing page, if you will. And, you know, you can add a client, you can do a bunch of things from this page, but we're not going to work in this page. This is kind of like an overview of everything. And if you focus on all this stuff, it's kind of just overwhelming because you really don't need to even worry about this page. Um, you don't need to get CRC certified because this is what the training is going to do for you. Um, I did all of that. I took the credit hero challenge. I took the CRC certified, um, program, I did the master classes. I pretty much got every, I bought everything from them when I was new, but it wasn't as detailed as I needed it to be, which is why I did this course now. And I understand why credit repair cloud can't really go into much detail because there are certain things that they don't get into. They don't really get into credit repair. They can't, but you know, by law. Um, they're just a software company, so they have to really stay away from giving any sort of, you know, advice. They can show you how their software works, but at the end of the day, they can't tell you what to do, how to do it, and give you the specifics 
of someone that actually does this day in and day out and has been doing it for some years now. So I want to be able to provide value to new and existing credit repair agents that are, you know, in the process of growing their credit repair brand and business and be able to walk you through what has been successful for me and some of my clients that I work with, right? And you really have to understand when it comes to success, everyone's definition of success is different. Everyone's goals are different, right? You being a millionaire in three months is probably not a realistic goal. So we have to set realistic goals. If your goal is $200 a day, great, let's do that. My goal is $200 a day. I want to make, you know, $1,400 in a week. That's my goal. Or I want to make $1,500 in a week. That's $6,000 a month. Let's achieve those goals before we go after other goals, okay? We have to go in steps, okay? And, you know, even if your goals only make $100 a day, you know, that's a huge, huge pay increase for anybody because anyone at a job is limited to the amount of income that they can bring home. You know, they might get some overtime, you know, but that's it. You know, their income is pretty much, it is what it is. It, it is limited. There's a cap on it. With you bringing different products and services that you offer to consumers, to business owners, you are increasing your pay because there are a number of ways that you can make money with things, products, services that you're already good at and that you can incorporate into your business. Credit repair is just one of many income streams that we should have, okay? The goal is creating multiple streams of income. And in the course, we cover some of the other and additional streams of income that you guys can be working on, like network marketing, um, affiliate marketing, social media, you know, there's a ton of different ways out there. So, but we're not going to get into all that today. Today is focused on credit repair cloud. So I never work from this main screen, the home screen. I just never do it because I want to go exactly where I need to go. This is really going to confuse just a lot of people. So what we're going to focus on right now is the company setup, which is under the My Company tab. Once you're under the My Company tab, you're going to see all of your, you know, company information. Now, keep in mind, this information is the information that will be on all of your documents sent to clients from Credit Repair Cloud. It'll be on your credit audits. It'll be on you know, all of the emails and information. So you want to make sure that you have your company name. You want to make sure you have your company website. Okay. If you don't have a company name or if you don't have a company website, that's fine. Just put your name. You don't necessarily need a website right now. However, it is always best practice to get a website. And in the course, I actually show you how to build a simple five page website using Wix. So um, it's very easy. They have the plugins that you can get right from Credit Repair Cloud to put clients into your uh, system. I have never been a person that wanted to build a website, nor you know, was I interested in it. However, Wix makes it very easy and um, you can definitely create one yourself. If you need help, you can use sites like Fiverr and um, Upwork to find someone that's, you know, a few dollars an hour to create you, um, you know, a basic website just so you can have a professional web presence, okay? Your mailing address. Now, this address is going to be on documents that will be sent to clients. So I recommend getting some sort of virtual business address. Um, in the course, of course, I talk about 
Opus, which is $99 a month for a virtual business address and a business telephone number. Because you don't necessarily want people calling your cell phone all the time. Of course, you know, you can tell people they can text you, but you don't want people calling all the time. So I would recommend if you, if it's in your budget and you're starting a credit repair business, get a virtual business address with Opus and I'll leave the link below because we're partnered with Opus so you can get a special discount with them when you sign up under our company and the code is on our landing page that is on the link below. So make sure to let them know that you're, um, you're with us. So fill out all this information, make sure to put your email address that you want the email to appear like it's from. So again, I don't recommend Yahoo. I don't recommend Gmail. I recommend having a professional email. Um, that is something like, you know, support at abccompany.com. I do like dot coms best because they are easier. They're well understood by people. And I just feel like they're just a better domain name because a lot of people know dot com. Okay. Um, and it leaves less room for error. So once you have all this information filled out, and again, you can just put your name in the company name. If you don't have a company name yet, you want to just hit submit and that's going to go ahead and that is going to save it into the system. Okay. Um, that is your company profile. That's it. Very easy, very simple. Okay. Next is my team members. So let's kind of go over this real fast. You can have three team members with a normal membership where you're paying $179 a month. Okay. Sometimes you might need more than three team members and that's okay, but you will have to pay for each additional team member. So we want to make sure that, you know, if you can share teams with someone or get creative somehow, um, just to kind of save, like I have two people that used to share a login, but they did completely different jobs. Like one person would literally just print all of our letters and send them out. And then another person was just doing customer service. So it's kind of, you know, if you have people that are like that, great. But if you have disputers, I would have them have a different uh, login because you want to make sure that, you know, they're not making any mistakes and things of that nature. But, you know, when you have two roles that wouldn't necessarily be making mistakes, like as far as dispute letters go, then, you know, I don't see why they would not be able to share a login if they're just providing customer support. Um, so there's customer support and then there's dispute processors, two different positions and then you've got your operations. Okay. So that's your three logins that you want to have operations, support, customer support, and then, um, dispute processors. Okay. So this is where you would just add a team member and it's very simple. You just are going to need their name, uh, first name, last name. You don't have to put an address in there, create their user ID. Um, the password is going to be selected by you. Okay. The role select what role you want them to be. And we'll go over credit roles and permissions in the next, um, option here for company settings, email, they do need to have an email address. So what I recommend is setting up a support email with your company email. So remember earlier I said, you know, just have, you know, support at abccompany.com or whatever. Do a support email. And if you're using the support email, do another email like, you know, disputes or admin at abccompany.com. So just create a separate email. So that way they're login credentials because every user will need to have a separate email. They cannot share emails. Okay. 
Um, you don't need to put a mobile. You j really just need first name, last name, and the role and their email. Now, as far as the first name and last name, if you don't have like both of those, you can just put, you know, first name support, last name team, because that's who your clients are going to see as their name. Because if you have customer service people that maybe share a login, then you don't necessarily, I mean, it doesn't matter. They're doing the same job basically, right? And they can always make notes in the client's account. If they do something for a client or, you know, anything of that nature, you always want to document the process and put notes. And we'll get into that later on, but, you know, just be mindful that you're going to, when you're training your staff members, you want to ensure that they are aware they have to document the process. Okay. They are going to have to make sure that they use a lot of notes and document everything that they do. So that's pretty much it for adding someone very simple. We're just going to go ahead and exit out of here. And if you have someone that is active and you need to make them unactive, you can always just click on that you can delete members. Um, but that would, you know, delete anything that they would have uploaded like documents or notes. So you, I don't ever recommend deleting members. You can just make them, um, inactive. All right. Next is going to be the roles and permissions. So we just talked about that briefly. These are roles that your, uh, users will have. So like I was saying before, there's an admin, there's credit specialist, sales representative, and there's processor. So what I do is what I would recommend is create your own role because what we want to do is create our standard operating procedure. Okay. And that's what a lot of people fail to do is they don't put together a simple SOP, which is a standard operating procedure. And you can do a SOP, you know, very simple it doesn't need to be detailed. I recommend starting a Trello board so you can keep all of these documents in your Trello board. So when you do have new hires, it's very easy to onboard them. Uh, you can have an SOP. You can make a video of you reviewing the SOP and make it very, very easy for anyone to understand what their duties are, what this role consists of, what's expected of them, right? Um, and that's really important, especially when you're going to be having customer service and dispute processors. Okay. So let's just do uh, customer support. And then we're going to hit add. Okay. And this is now keep in mind, there's three that are locked. Those come with the system, right? Now, once we have customer support created, we're going to hit manage permissions and we're going to pretty much select most things for customer support because we want them to be able to, um, edit and view a client agreement, not delete, but we want them to be able to edit it. Uh, we want them to pretty much be able to add, edit, and view, um, affiliate. Yep. Cause customer service should be responsible for all of our customers, which would include affiliates if you're working with people, cause they're often going to have questions and just select anything that you feel would be, you know, applicable to your customer support team. Okay. Um, so what we're going to do is make sure that you've got everything here. Okay. Everything is selected. You do not need to save it because it automatically saves it. So that's the great thing about it. So instead of hitting the back button, we want to just hit roles and permissions. You never really want to use the back button when you are using credit repair cloud, because there are little areas where you can click where it will take you back to where you actually need to go. Cause sometimes it will take you all the way back and then you get lost. So we're going to try not to do that. So you can always check um, by hitting manage and you'll see 
we want to even select this, we can, and it will be applied. Okay, so um, these are the roles. Pretty straightforward. Again, operations, uh, you know, customer support, client support, or plain support. And then you're going to have your dispute processors. At this point, the operations person's probably going to be responsible for sales until you get big enough to where you have your own sales team. But typically operations, they, they gonna, they're going to have to have a handle on sales, you know, marketing, uh, admin, customer service, pretty much everything that, you know, would operate a successful business. So that all needs to be put into your standard operating procedure. And sometimes we are the operations manager, the owner, the, you know, you are going to be the operations manager. So, you know, when you run a small business, oftentimes you wear many hats and we really need to understand, you know, how to multitask and assign duties to those people that would be good at it. Right. Uh, and there's a lot of people out there that you can find that can help you with your business. Um, you know, I oftentimes talk about hiring people from the Philippines to help you and you can, um, place ads on, you know, different job boards, uh, pH jobs online is a popular one. And, uh, what I've been using lately is Hubstaff. Uh, you can post jobs on there. I found a few people that have really worked out and I've also posted job postings on different Facebook groups. Um, if I was looking for a video editor or, you know, any type of specific role that I was looking for help with so I could delegate that task to someone else, you know, go where the professionals are, go where those people are going to be hanging out. Okay. Facebook groups are a great place to find people that really specialize in particular tasks that you're looking for. Um, Upwork is good. Fiverr is good, but you know, sometimes I don't like paying, you know, all those extra fees. I'd rather find someone organically that is going to be a great match. And even though, um, pH jobs online is a small fee for you to post, uh, up to three job ads, it's worth it because you can post a job for a customer service rep. You can post a job for a dispute processor. You can, um, you know, post a, a job posting for a social media manager. And even if you're not ready to hire all of those people right now, at least you've got a ton of resumes of people that are going to be interested that you can reach out to and, you know, see if they'd be wanting to, you know, tr try a trial period or, you know, if they'd be available to start when you're ready. And at this point, you know, it's good to just start planning, even if you're a month out, because sometimes people have other jobs. Um, sometimes you might want to give someone a trial period to see if they're going to work out because you never want to really just trust what these people say, because again, they are in other countries. So there might be some, uh, misunderstandings and you want to make sure that you're hiring someone that really knows what they're doing. And even though they've worked for another credit repair company or a similar company, they still might not fully understand everything. And that's why it's so important for you guys to put the job duties, the responsibilities and the expectations of your roles into a SOP, a standard operating procedure. So that way your uh, staff has step-by-step -step instructions. They know what's expected of them. They know, you know, what hours they're working, what days they're working. They, you know, everything is in the standard operating procedure. And if for some reason that person doesn't work out and you hire someone new, you don't have to train. You don't have to spend days training someone because you can create a Trello board. Here's the standard operating procedure. Here's frequently asked questions. You know, here's some training videos to help get you started. 
And what I do and what I recommend is creating a loom video, L-O-O-M, loom. It's um, actually, you can download it for free. They allow you to record, I believe it's up to five minutes free, but it's really cheap. I, I think it's like 20 or 30 bucks for it, but it's a screen recording and you can literally just create a video of you recording your SOP and just review it with someone like you'd be onboarding a new staff member. So that way it's all recorded and you only have to do the work once. Okay. So those are just some tips that have helped me and, um, really have made my onboarding with new staff member a breeze.